Uh, that's Jalen Turner. Is that really? You, you're gonna play that, and you're gonna and people are gonna go, "Oh, this guy doesn't know his shit." Yeah. That's the song Rising Force. What is that, that song? The song you're is called on, Rising Force. That's Rising Force. Song, you're yeah, not I, on that. Oh, no, that's that's uh, Jolyn. Wait, aren't you a part of the Rising Force thing? Yeah, but they had a song called Rising Force that was on the fourth album. I did the first two albums. Really. So, yeah. so, so Wikipedia is giving me the wrong information here. No, it, I Ingbe's band was called Ingbe Malmsteen's Rising Force, so that's where you're getting confused. I am. Yeah. So what hell band are you playing on? What band are you from? Wikipedia is telling me you're in that band. Ingbe Malmsteen's Rising Force, not the song Rising Whoa, Force. Oh, stop! Come on. Stop. Is it Ingbe or Ingwe? How do you pronounce it? Ingbe, like Stingray. Ingbe. Ingbe. Ingve Malmstein. It's kind of Jewish sounding. Ingve, oi. No V. Is there a V pronounced in Ing? Yes, because it, it, if you spell his name properly, it's I N G V E. But when you spell it out phonetically in their language, it's Y N G W I E because they pronounce oh. their they pronounce their W's as a V. So this is good to know. This could be a clip right here. This is a whole. This is breaking news story right here. So <laughs> wait. So now teach me how to say it. Let's teach me. This is everybody watching. This is Jeff Scott Soto. He's Apollo, right? He was part of uh, Mr. Malmsteen's band, Ingve, In In right? Did I say it right? Ingve, hey, you got it. Ingve, Ingve. In Rhymes with Stingray. That's how. That's how I had to tell everybody that's back in the day. Even my mm -hmm. mother, when when I first got the gig, she was like, "What's this guy? Wee 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 wee." And I know like, Ingve. Yeah, wee wee wee. wee. No, oh. no, no, no. It rhymes with stingray. Just say stingray, Ingve. It's easy. All right. I'll, I'm going to remember that. If I forget, you correct me. But anyway, this is Artist on Record, your ultimate intimate conversation with your favorite artist. I am Stefan. That's my friend, Jeff Scott Soto. Today, we're going to talk about Ingve and Jeff Scott Soto. Jeff Scott Soto is here to beg for forgiveness. But can Ingve forgive and forget? Don't touch that dial, kids. Put your comments down below. Subscribe and hit the bell to be notified so you don't miss any other episodes. It all starts now. mentioned um joel and turner he's a friend of mine he's been on the show yeah i've known joey since uh since right around the time uh i was with ingve and he obviously he was uh one of the singers that preceded me and uh yeah we're still buds to this day the, great I guy know joey a long time almost almost 40 years he's a great guy east coast guy yeah that's, that's all why, of us yeah, yeah that's what makes it cool right here and uh i'm a brooklyn boy myself that's right. And speaking of Brooklyn, everybody, I am Stefan. I am drinking coffee. And it is not sponsored by Parisi Cannoli Cream Coffee. You know why? Because he's an East Coast guy and he does not pay anybody. You got to pay him to drink his coffee. This is good stuff. I'm even going to pour a little cup over here on my coffee. This is my coffee uh, talk mug. That is not free. You can buy that in links or down below. And uh, right here, a little cup for you. All right. And that's. I remember Coffee Talk. I did an episode during the lockdown you, with you. You on that. did. You yeah. did. This is this is uh, Andrew Dice Clay's buddy over here. Good guy. His okay. name is Wheels. So check him out on Instagram. All that stuff. Good. Good coffee. Smells great. Cannoli cream. Even nice. even, even has the fat Clemenza coffee. <laughs> Tell, swear to God, it's incredible. You can't even make it up. You can't make That's it amazing. up. It is the amazing. People do for marketing, huh? Oh, he's good. He's good. And you know what? And if he doesn't like you, you might end up being in a trunk in the Belt Parkway. You don't want to cross wheels. He's a tough guy right. over there. But That's but anyway, cool, huh? now let's go talk a little bit about the anniversary of your first big gig that kind of brought your name to everybody. Yeah. Rising Force with Ingve. Yeah. Right? They, the, I, I joined them August. I was officially in this band, the singer for Rising Force, and so it was uh, August of 1984. 1984. How many years already is that now? This is next year's gonna be 40 years. 40 years. Next year is my 40 year anniversary, not only of the first Thing Bay record, but it's also 40 year anniversary of my professional career. I was 18 when I joined them. 18. And and we talked about this before when you got the gig and your mom and you said in the beginning interview this yeah. when he uh -huh. when he called you for the gig and all that. So wow. Okay. So is there going to be an anniversary? Is there talk about this? I see on the internet. I'm not going to stir this up, but inquiring minds want to know. What's what's the situation with you and Mr. Ingve? Can you be friends? Why can't we be friends? Can Man. there be a reunion? Would the people want to see the original? And, you know, 
Would they want to see, you know, people want to see Roth, Eddie Van Halen. You guys are alive. You're well, you're healthy, you're breathing. I'm always extending that olive branch. I'm always reaching out. I mean, yes, I've, I've said some things when incidents occur and I get you, you get that fire under you. You want, you kind of want to release it and let everybody know you're angry about something or, or something that was done on that, on their side of the fence. And you just kind of let it out and then you regret it later. You're like, ah, oh, man, I should have thought of that. I should have yeah. slept on that before I put that out there. Yeah. There've been a few of those times. And one of the most recent ones, it was a situation uh, locally here where I went to, to go see my friend, Phil X. He was touring with a band because he was off from Bon Jovi and they were opening for Ingve. And I didn't even go to the show to go see Ingve. I went to go see him. I was planning to leave. And there was an incident where I was asked to leave. Otherwise the show wouldn't go on. Now I don't want to harp on that. It, it's already been, it's already been discussed. It's already been bludgeoned to death. I, it's, it's something that I don't even want to bring up anymore, but because we're talking about it, we're talking about the whole fracture of our relationship. Naturally, I would love to just hug it out, man. I'd love to sit down with the guy. I don't want anything from him. I don't, I don't, I don't want a success. I don't want to, um, ride his coattails or put him back on the map so I can get something from it. Not, not at all. He was my friend. We, we were in a band together. I was in his band. I was his employee, whatever you want to call it. I was his singer. And I, I respect what we did together. I respect the fans that loved what we did together. And I would love to do it together again, one more time for them, for us and for me to celebrate my 40 years in this, in this career, in this life, I would love nothing more than to do it with Ingvay, but so it really is on the balls in his court. Um, if we sat down, we could we could hash a lot of this. Uh, I guess if he thinks I'm holding a grudge, whatever, we can get all that off the table, become friends, and I don't need or want anything from the guy. I just want the respect, not even the respect. I just want to leave this planet with no enemies. I want all the water under the bridge. We hug it out. The day I die, I want people to go. Thank God we didn't we didn't go out that way. Yeah, and that's it. I mean, I mean, why can't you pick up a phone and just call without getting all the other people involved? I think it's uh, there are too many um, parameters on his side, or too many walls on his side that'll kind of cock block it and. And I don't mean that in a, again, in a negative context, I just mean in general, it's almost like they, they just want to make sure that we never reunite, that we never really put that, that friendship back together for whatever reason or another. It is, I was always a positive influence around Ingbe. I never smoked, never drank, never did a drug. Uh, everything I did back then was all about the music and it was all about the respect for the music and what we did. And all I wanted out of the situation was to be respected in turn in you know, in return. And when I felt disrespected, I said, I'm jumping ship because I want to be in something where I'm appreciated and respected and we move forward together. And I've had a 40 year career of hopping ship from a lot of different things because for one reason or another, it just doesn't work. So you have to find that one thing that does work. Talisman lasted 19 years for a reason. Yeah. I'm with TSO for 15 years for a reason because you find certain things that resonate and you know, you, I, I learned this from Eric Singer, know the gig, keep the gig. And that's what it is. But sometimes you, if you don't feel appreciated and you don't feel like you're being utilized the way you want to be, you got to move on. And, and that's the only reason, but even moving on, we were friends. I just posted something recently. The mm -hmm. last time I joined Ingve on stage was in, at the year, in the year 2000 in August. And that was a time where we were still friends. I could call him up and when he's playing town and say, Hey, come to the show, come up and do a song with me. I mean, I, I miss that. I, I'd love to have that again with the guy. Yeah. When was the last time you had a conversation with him? 2002 was the last time we actually spoke on the phone, I think. I think I might have seen him at NAM after that. But 2002, we had a conversation because I was releasing uh, a live DVD. It was my first live outing. I was doing some stuff. at. I just signed with Frontiers Records. Yeah. And most people don't know, when you cover somebody's song, when you do a song that others own the publishing for or you, that you have not, like if I want to do a cover of a print song, whatever you can do it. As long as when you release it, you put all the credits on there, the publishing, everything's on there. So they, everybody knows where the money's going, where, where to pay it. But for DVD, for video, it's something called sync rights. You need to get an affidavit basically signing off from the artist or the publishing company that you're able to do that. 
It's not about even changing the song. It's that you can play it verbatim and sing it verbatim. You still need those sync rights. So I needed to get sync rights for songs that I did on that live DVD. I got it from Queen. I got it from Seal because Talisman did a, a cover of his song, Crazy. All across the board. We did Stand Up from the movie Rockstar and Sammy mm -hmm. Hager wrote that. I got everything signed off. And nobody was even asking for money. They said, yeah, just go for it. Because when you release something like that, they start getting paid from the very first sale onward. It's 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 a no brainer. Yeah, but some yeah. artists just won't do it. And unfortunately, I I had to call. I, I thought it would be a no brainer, and I would get that from Ingve, but it, they they wanted me to pay for it, and I almost had to remove it from there. I had to go through different channels to keep it on there. But I that was one of the first things. I'm like, oh, well, that's kind of crappy. You know, I, I have to go through these channels when I thought I could call my friend. It would be that easy, and it wasn't. Yeah. I mean, the media and podcasts like this, you know, everything gets taken, clips yeah. get out there. Absolutely. I mean, he felt like, and if you read, you know, the past news, he felt like his reputation and he felt attacked from you. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. that's what he felt attacked. Right. And and to clear the air, were you ever able or were you ever able to try to write him or try to clear the air with him? I wasn't trying to attack you. Said, John Lennon, I said what I said, I, and it turned into all this. I've had messages sent directly to him. I don't have his number. I don't. I don't really want his number because it would it would bother me more to be ghosted and to for you know to basically get radio silence if I reach out to him and he doesn't doesn't reach out back. So I would rather get messages to him from people very close to him that see him and talk to him every day. And I've done that. I, I've done interviews where I've extended the olive branch. I got the 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 heavy metal award, uh, uh, heavy the Hall of Heavy Metal History. I got an award for that for being part of. It. I was inducted into that, and in my acceptance speech, he was a, a big part of it. And I want, I even wanted that message to get to him. It started for me 35 years ago. There's one person that looked at me and said, "I'm going to give this 18 year old Puerto Rican kid with really shitty hair a chance to front me." and take me to the next level of my own solo career. This one guy, everybody thinks we don't get along, everybody thinks we don't like each other, but contrary to belief, from this day forward, I give nothing but love and respect to Ingve Mounsley. You can put that shit on Blabbermouth. You know, that I was just a, an 18 year old Puerto Rican kid and he saw something in me and if it wasn't for what he saw in me, I wouldn't be doing that speech right now. And I, I wanted to make sure that he heard that I appreciate what I got from being a part of his his life and his career, and it, this it just still <laughs> falls on deaf ears. Yeah, so he's a game changer in your life, and you owe a lot to him. Absolutely, and yeah. I want to make sure he knows that. I don't want him to to think that um, he needs me or he deserves me. I, it was all about what I was able. I springboarded from what he did. I joined his band. I got to write with him. I got to do the touring and all that stuff. And no, it didn't work out. But in the end, I still, that was the beginning. That was the humble beginning of what led to everything else that happened. It would have been a completely different ride had it not started there. How long were you in playing with him for it? With him? It was like the Beatles. It was <laughs> such a short time. I joined him in August of 84. I left the band not even a full year later. I left in May officially of 85. They did the... Uh, Mark Bowles replaced me. They did a tour. They did a record. And Mark Bowles wasn't working out in 86. So not even a year later, I got the call saying they, they, they're they going to let him go. Would I mm -hmm. step back in? And I was hesitant because I started remembering all the reasons why I left in the first place. But I had a manager at the time that made sure that all those reasons would not resurface. And I said yes to the situation. And, and it was a much better situation for me the second time around. But it still had its flaws. It still wasn't that it wasn't perfect. Yeah. And I would have continued with them, but it was their decision at the end of, uh, it was the beginning of 87. It was the, we finished with Iron Maiden in January of 87. And after that, they, they just decided they, he's going to move on. I don't know if he had a, any other singers before Joe, but Joe Lynn was the one that came in after me. It came in after you because originally was Rising Force going to be an instrumental side project from from Alcatraz? No. Oh no, that's not true. Well, the, the album was going to be his first solo, his a solo album while he was still in Alcatraz. He started recording the very first album, the one that's the forty year anniversary next year. Mm -hmm. he started recording that while he was still in Alcatraz as an okay. outlet 
the show showcases guitar playing. There were two songs that had vocals on it that he was going to sing. And it was, it was funny because the weekend he was supposed to sing them the night before I happened to be at his house. And that's when I was officially inducted into the band. I was told mm -hmm. I was a singer and the, I, the, the guys were drinking and having a good time. I didn't drink anything back then. And I, they were just in this like really serious powwow situation, just talking about whatever they were talking about in Swedish. I couldn't understand a word of it. So finally he comes to me and he says, yeah, we've been talking for the past hour. The guys are trying to convince me to let you sing the songs, which I'm doing tomorrow. So take these two songs home, learn them, come to the studio tomorrow. If you sound good on them, you stay on the record. If not, I'm going to sing them. I bowled him over with the first one. We knocked it out of the park, sang the second one the next day and it was done. I was on what the was first the first one. song you sang with him? The first one was As Above. So no, we did uh, Now Your Ships Are Burned, but I auditioned for him with the, the other song that's on that record, As Above, So Below. And mm -hmm. I still have on my laptop, I still have the original demo of me singing the mock melodies and just to show him what my wow. voice sounds like. And again, I was 18. I had no experience. I'd sung in a few cover bands and 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 this I had one original band from that time. It was a band called Canaan. And that was the demo that I sent in that got me the audition. And from that I I got the gig. He wrote it's all the tracks were written by him. Did you do any melody of your own, like the lines, or were they written out for you? Or first album we did. Uh second album I, I wrote more. Uh I co-wrote I'll see the light tonight with him. Um anything that I did, we would work out and hash out together. The only one that remained as I wrote it, and even lyrically that he didn't take any credit for was a song called On the Run Again from the Marching Out album. That's the only song on the Marching Out record where you see Malmstein and Soto. The, the other ones you'll see Malmstein, Malmstein, and Soto because with the publishing split, he's, he gets the composer side, Malmstein, and then he also gets the author side, Malmstein, when it comes to lyrics. But there, there was even song, I mean, the song Don't Let It In, I wrote all the lyrics, but he wrote the title, so he took 50% of the authorship yeah. on that. Yeah, also, like tonight he wrote, he took out some of my words and put some of his in, and we he ironed out a couple of the melodies that I came up with, and so that was a true collaboration. And it's funny because everybody says, um, everybody's asking me what's it like to work with Ingvay Mousy, and I said I don't know. I know what it's like to work for him because you were working for him, even though you're working with him, you're still working for him in terms of what he wanted. I wasn't necessarily doing things that just because I really liked them or I thought they were strong. It's, it, everything had to be filtered and, sh and sifted by him. And for, for all intent and purpose, it, that's how it worked out. But to, to hear later after the fact that he wrote everything, even everything back then, it's kind of a smack in the face because I, I was part of it and I'm proud to be part of it. So you're on three records of, of of Ingves, yeah, right? The first two, and then and then we yeah, and then he did an uh, an album of covers called Inspirations, and I I, I kind of reunited ten years after I was out of the band to be on that. And you and see, Steph, this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. I'm talking about stuff just just as a conversation. I'm, I'm yeah, giving yeah. information that you maybe didn't know, but obviously you can take some of what I just said and twist it into a different context that. And then all of a sudden it's like, why is Jeff still talking about this stuff? Why is he still harboring on the, he, he's, he, he must be so in Ingve's shadow that he still only wants to talk about this. No, I'm talking about everything. And this is part of the conversation. I'm giving you information of stuff that you never knew mm -hmm. that maybe puts me in a better light in terms of, I'm not just a side guy, but obviously it'll, it could be flipped later as to something that could be negative that I'm, I'm talking shit. Uh, absolutely i'm i'm interested look look in in the world of guitar you got big names like you got the eddie van halens you have the blackmores you know and ingve is up there with those cats as a guitar player and and even on the the side note the singers he's worked with with joe yeah. turner you know um just everybody he's worked with and um you uh, each singer has an ingve story and fans yeah. are interested in those stories yeah you know so if anybody gets to speak to you or the other singer is Mark, you know, that was a, another singer yeah. there, they're, they're going to ask right out the gate, hey, what was it like to play with Ingve? Or and this then and later that? it comes across a, dude, it's 40 years later, let it go. I'm like, yeah. was he cranky if he didn't get his coffee? You know, that's what I want to know. You yeah, know, I'm, I'm not going to let it go because it's part of the story. It's part of what you're asking me. If, if I'm sitting here bringing up topics for the sake of trying to harp on it, that's totally different. But when you're asking me a question and it, there's a story to tell behind that question, I'm going to give you all the details. I'm going to be candid about it because it's 
the only way the story makes sense. But if you don't listen to the full story, you're gonna pick and choose what you think. I'm, I'm. Oh, he's just all. He's just so bitter. He's a bitter soup, sour grapes. You know, it's not about that at all. You, you, what you say, but you you're proud of the time you you played with him, right? Yeah. You, you, it's it's a big thing. He was the guy that opened this platform to you to go to journey to go the sons of apollo just to do all everything this happened for a reason for what you know and it's the old cliche of one door closes another one opens a lot of doors open because of what i did with him and for him and I, of course i want him to know i appreciate that and I, i've let him know i've you know part of our friendship was making sure that he realized i'm not just trying to get more or trying to get something out of him Again, it's all about the fact that i understood him i there's a lot of things about Ingve that people don't get or understand why he's the way he is or why he's perceived as something because I knew I knew I knew a lot about his childhood. I knew about his growing up years. I knew what he dealt with when he came out to LA the first time. I know what makes him tick. So if I can accept that and be his friend by knowing what makes him tick, you know, that's that's what it's all about. Now, if you're gonna be self-absorbed and you're gonna be like, what the opposite of what he is, you're going to say, I don't, I can't be around people like that. I don't want to know people like that. I don't want to be friends with people like that. And you make that decision. I was, I was smart enough to know how to deal with Ingve and some of the things that made him maybe being perceived as difficult or being the, uh, the wrong kind of uh, personality. And I knew how to do it. I embraced it. And I made sure he understood that I understood. And that's how we were friends for so long. It just, unfortunately, they, to to be honest with you, and if this is used, and if you, you're going to use this in the interview, the 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 whole thing shifted when Marcel Jacob took his life, and I was in such a a funk and such a mental breakdown of the whole thing that when I found out that Ingve was basically um, not acknowledging it, I I said something in the press that I regret saying. I said Ingve's dead to me, and it got back to him. It's and because I was grieving my friend, I was grieving my brother in the band and all they had, all he had to do was say, I, I, you know, we had a falling out or whatever reason, but I'm so sorry to hear that he's passed. None of this would have happened, but because that happened and because of what I said, and I think that was the beginning of where we are today. Did he have a falling out with Marcel too, Ingrid? Yeah. Did they, they had a falling out. They had a proper falling out. Yeah. They had a proper and Marcel out. wasn't one to mince words. You know, if, if somebody, uh, did him wrong it, the way the reason why he left the band in the first place they made amends and they were touring together and during that little kind of reunion get together it happened again and marcel basically said i'm done and mm -hmm. so it was from that that that's where the uh the kind of wall the the, the block happened and and unfortunately uh it carried on through me when marcel took his life which probably ingve felt some guilt about when marcel passed away too and it probably hurt him somehow. I I'm going to I'm going to go on record to say I'm sure he did. I mean they were friends as teenagers. They they were in the early stages of rising mm -hmm. force back in the back in Sweden and uh you know Marcel even he bought the the tapes that they needed to make the demos. The the first demos that Ingve made that ended up in Varney's hands that got him to U the US and got him to Steeler. Marcel paid for those demos. He not the demos, he paid for the tapes. So they were they did this together back in the day, even though Ingve was the, he was in control. He, it was his music and everything, but they had a brothership. They, they, they had a brotherhood. They had a, a, this kinship like brothers. And I hated to see that being broken, especially the fact that we lost him. Yeah. We lost him. You, you put that water under the bridge and you, you make your amends by saying, I'm sorry for his, for his loss. I'm sorry to the family. And, and then you can move on with life. But unfortunately that when that didn't happen at that time, I opened my big mouth and uh and that was the beginning of all this kind of negative unrest you you got emotional and you let emotion, your emotions yeah yeah. Trying, yeah yeah you let your emotions have you ever have you ever said that to ingve like hey i let the my emotions get the best of me and uh, you know i said what i Not said directly, i mean from that point onward i and it's strange because he, there was he he put his autobiography out right around the same time so he would have been writing it just before I opened my big mouth and put that out because the uh, the autobiography book came out the year later and he's praising me in it. He's talking about Jeff as a great singer. He's, a, he's one of the guys that I really got along well with. You know, he's, he's had, he had he waited to write the book. 
I not only would have been omitted or just maybe just my name mentioned, but there's no way he would have said nice things about it. And that's the Ingbe I remember. That's the Ingbe that I held on to friendship wise for so long. And that's mm -hmm. why he mentioned me in the book. Even the fact that he's got a son that I never met. His son's an adult now. Wow. And his son doesn't have any history with the people that had history with the, with his dad. I would love to know his son. I would love to be part of that. You know, again, I don't want anything from the guy. I don't want to be a singer again. I don't want to uh, use our friendship or use any reunions to, to push my agenda. It has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with respecting what he did for me, respecting what the, the fans did for us. And that's what it's about. You know, you, you get longevity in this, in this career by being humble to the fact that without those people, you would, you'd have nothing. You have nothing. You could, you could do all the Instagram uh, videos and stories and singing and playing guitar and all that stuff. But without the right people behind you, that's all you're ever going to end up being. You've got to get out there and, and, and not only do it, but you got to really focus on the people who got helped you get there. You know what? Without sounding negative, without sounding like, uh, again, negative. I'll do the songs. I'll do some of these songs with or without them because next year is my 40 year anniversary, just the same as it's the 40 year anniversary of the Rising Force album. And I want to celebrate that stuff. I want to celebrate those songs. I'd love to do it with them. If I can't do it with them, I'm going to do it without them. And again, that's not negative. That's not a dig at towards him. And it's also not me trying to nudge him to do it. It's basically just reminding him, I would love to do it. If for some unforeseen reason or miracle happens that puts us back on stage together, I'd rather do it with him than for me to do it on my own. Here we here's, go. What you, here's what you need. All right. I want you to listen to me. Okay, oh, Jeff. Is. Okay. I'm listening. I'm going to help all because this is what I do. You know, Ingve, if you're watching this, and if your management is watching this, this is what you guys got to do. Stop. Put the differences aside. Look what year we're living in. Look how old we're getting. We're getting older. Grudges, does this really matter? No, it doesn't matter. Let's go back. Remember the time when you first met Jeff? Jeff, you remember the time when you first met Ingve? The magic you guys had together, the fire, the electricity, the audience? Come on, Ingve. Do you still feel that without Jeff? Jeff, do you feel that without Ingve? No. <laughs> Roth, did he feel it without Eddie? No. Did Eddie feel it without Roth? Mm -hmm. But but you know, you never know. Well, you never know what Eddie felt because he's not here to defend himself. But That's Ingve, awesome. you're here. You're here, Jeff. And there's great guitar players that could try to imitate Ingve, but no, you, 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 you can't go without with Ingve. And and Ingve, you can't go out with Without the vocals, you get all these other singers. No. Here's what you guys need to do. You need to make nice with each other because the audience, it's about the fans. And the fans are going to want to see you two together. I know I would. It's about bringing back memories. And you know what? All this nonsense, you were emotional. You guys both lost a friend, you know. But you guys are here right now. Wouldn't it be really awful if you guys were not here to make nice with each other? So make nice, put the band back together, do one show for the fans, and if that goes well, do another. And if another goes well, there's going to be some greedy promoter out there throwing the money and want to do more. Trust Adika. What else can I do to make it happen for you guys? Do you understand? You are the smoothest peace talker, peacemaker, peace talker, whatever. That voice, I'm telling you right now. Yeah. I was the one with the beef. It would be over just hearing the, the it, way you it, said that. Let me it tell you over. something. Jeff, can I tell you something? I'm the guy they bring to the Middle East to make peace. There you go. I'm the guy. Yeah. I'm like I'm like yeah. Manak and Begum. I'm, I'm I'm I am I am that guy. I'm this I help. Uh, we gotta get we gotta we gotta you know what? This is what I'm gonna do over here. In the comments and everybody watching, I want you to put your comments right here in the chat. And if you're not in the chat, I want you to put the comments. Tell me what you want to see. Would you like to see Jeff and Ingve do a show? Let us know. Because your voice matters. And maybe uh maybe you might need to make a phone call. You hey, know? Man. Hey, I hear you, man. That's the only way. The number, I'll, I'll be the first one to call if I had his number. That's it. Stop with all these yes people around. Get alone in a room. Just go in a, alone in a room.
or a phone and just be alone with nobody listening. Peaches yeah. and her baby. Reun- I love it. Reunited. 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 So good. <laughs> That's it. It'd be nice. It'd be nice. Yeah. Everybody wants. I mean, Ingve, if you're watching this, isn't there a man that you love and that you wish you would see? Just you, as a fan of rock and roll and music, wouldn't you want to see your favorite frontman and guitar play together for one show? Right? Because you love the band. Think about the people that love you, Ingve. Think about the people that love you, Jeff. Just put the get this the hate out come on staff you're the you're amazing that was mr jeff scott soto and make sure you comment down below and if you want to see our episodes unedited join right now members only here on youtube thank you for watching and click on the box that pops up right here we'll catch you all later remember who loves you baby we do